Welcome to Lost Future. I'm Mike Steeman. And I'm Steve Mason. And uh, we've got we've got a weird assortment of news. I actually think you have the uh, first article today. Hellman's tweaks and mayonnaise spat? I'm sorry, I I don't get it. Can can you Yeah, the headline's explain? like kind of awkward. Um, Hellman's tweaks site in mayonnaise spat. Not quite sure what the headline was going for there. But um, this is an article that was posted on November 17th um, on the Yahoo News site. It's an AP article. Um, so the story is basically that Unilever, uh, the umbrella corporation that Hellman's Mayonnaise falls under, okay. um, is suing this company for not being real mayonnaise and claiming that they are while at the same time claiming that they are real mayonnaise and not actually being real mayonnaise. Uh, so what is real mayonnaise, you ask? <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, can you pause and kind of... So, so first off, Unilever owns Hellman's? Yes, Unilever owns Hellman's mayonnaise. Okay, so is there some other obscure mayonnaise company suing Hellman's? Hellman's is, well, Unilever is suing this other obscure mayonnaise company uh, called Just Mayo. So let me read a couple paragraphs from the actual article. Um, Unilever's suit accuses Hampton Creek, the maker of Just Mayo, of false advertising because its product has no eggs and therefore does not meet the definition for mayonnaise. The suit says the word mayo implies the product is mayonnaise and that Just Mayo's uh, stealing market share from Hellman's. So they just outright say they're stealing market share from Hellman's. Wait, so <laughs> why, uh, like on what grounds does Hellman's slash Unilever claim Just Mayo is not Just Mayo? Well, they're basically saying that uh, since the product doesn't contain any eggs, it is not mayonnaise. So they can't, so it's, it, they're saying that they're, they're mislabeling the product. Um, is does that mean that Hellman's and Unilever are claiming that there's no such thing as a vegan mayo? Like if it's not if it doesn't have eggs, it's not mayo. So vegan mayo must not possibly exist. Is that what they're saying? I, you know, that was a question that I also had reading this article. Is um, basically who defined what mayonnaise is, and because the the whole argument is over the definition of mayonnaise. Um, what is? Did you look at Wikipedia? What do they say? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, that might be worth looking up real quick if you want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> just actually, for the sake that's... of comparison, I'm curious what the average description slash like uh, open source community endowed description of mayonnaise could possibly be. Because I, I actually couldn't even tell you. Fat, uh, buttery. Yellow fat. I don't. I don't know what. Okay, so this is. Um, okay, so according according to Wikipedia, um, oh, actually, this is even more interesting. Uh, this is from the Hellman's dot com about page. Um, mayonnaise is said to be the invention of French chef of the Duke de Richelieu in 1756, while the Duke was defeating the British at Port Mahon. His chef was creating a victory feast that included a sauce made of cream and eggs. That that just makes me think of, like, <laughs> like I went to the Hellman's mayonnaise site and they said mayonnaise was first invented by Duke Hellman's. <laughs> 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 right, right. Get up. All right, um, um, so is this Wikipedia? This is actually Hellman's site. That was like, on Hellman's site. So Google. now um, okay. Wikipedia, I'm not quite sure. Um, what the fuck is okay, mayonnaise? origin, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what, is, what is Merriam-Webster's definition of mayonnaise? I have no idea. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I, uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, so the term mayonnaise was uh, used in, in English as early as 1823. Um, I don't know uh, th- uh, th- who defined mayonnaise because now this is a big thing that's involving, you know, like the Food and Drug Administration because it's a labeling issue, um, which, you know, it tends to to seem that like a lot of these labeling issues that we're seeing with like, uh, for example, 
how goldfish, Pepperidge Farms goldfish, had natural on the product, but they mm-hmm. used GMOs. Um, they used GMO products. They use uh, soy oil, vegetable oil, um, and the, but it's labeled natural. So they got they got sued for that. Um, but it's it's semantics, and it's like who's defining these these words? Um, I'm willing to bet the FDA has some sort of definition of mayonnaise. The FDA dictionary. Um, well, I hope. In, in any event, um, another another uh, uh, paragraph from this article. It gets it gets more interesting. Um, so Michael Simon, a public health lawyer, said. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Michelle Simon, a public health lawyer, said she was discussing the case with Hampton Creek's founder this Friday when they noticed customer reviews on Unilever's website for Hellman's and Best Foods were being changed to describe some products as mayonnaise dressing rather than mayonnaise. So Unilever uh, was going into the customer... Um, comments and changing them where every time mayonnaise appeared they were changing it to mayonnaise dressing the reason being they have products Hellman's has mayonnaise products that don't contain eggs but are labeled mayonnaise so they're essentially doing the same thing that they're suing this other company for so so do they mean like Wait, does like ranch dressing or like sour cream or like for Russian dressing, like does that all fall under that category? Or like, what are we what are we talking about here, like product wise? Anything in specific or? So uh, you're talking about dressing? Well, I guess. Well, no, I guess I'm wondering what they're considering to be. Uh, you know what I mean? Like to be like a mayonnaise dressing. Or yeah. So I mean, they didn't change the product. They were changing the the references and the labelings on the product um oh. they were trying to like retroactively like like uh, oh, cover so up the fact that they were also using the label mayonnaise without having eggs in the product because that's so, what they were suing just mayo for wow so you're saying that 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 Hellman's is retroactively editing their own website yes customer comments wow yeah that actually is really interesting holy yeah. shit huh and, um, I would not have guessed that. What, what do you think the like? So you think they're doing that purely because of this legal battle, or what's like? What have you gotten with, out of this? Without a doubt, why right. else would they do that? They brought up they brought up know. this issue because they all of a sudden oh they're stealing our market share. We need to sue them and get rid of them as soon as possible. This new company that's trying to enter the mayonnaise market. Let's get rid of them. We're Unilever. We can do that. And then they later realized, oh shit, we don't have eggs in half of our products that we're calling mayonnaise. We need to go back and fix that before anyone notices. But people noticed. Wow, that's, um, that's so actually really crazy. In this in this article, there is also a comment um, uh, from uh, Mike F- uh, F- Fair Fairday, uh, vice president of foods for Unilever North America. He said the company decided to make the changes after the issues were raised. Um, uh, Faraday said Unilever's, Unilever should have taken down the customer comments in question rather than editing them. So he was confronted <laughs> about this um, and he was like, yeah, we should have just taken them down instead of editing them. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, we're really sorry that we got caught. <laughs> like, what the we're fuck? sorry. Oh, God. Isn't that the, really, story, really silly. the story of the system? Um, uh, all right. So, Shoot. Uh, yeah, so no, I just wanted to, to observe that um, uh, Hellman's, you know, like Hellman's mayonnaise is is Hellman's mayonnaise. That is like a household product for a year. I grew up with always a Hellman's mayonnaise in my fridge. I don't eat mayonnaise. I don't particularly like it. Um, but it's funny to see this new product uh, entering the market that has this sort of, if you look at the label for just mayo, um, if you look at the bottle, it's got this like natural kind of feel to it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's called, you know, just mayo. Like, Nothing else, none of that fancy stuff. Just pure mayo, and uh, it's 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 kind of like um, 
And then all of a sudden, you know, Hellman's is like, oh, man, we're there, they can really put a dent in our sales. They're, they're afraid of this company, these companies that are um, pushing like the natural, uh, real kind of um, products into the market. There's, so it just kind of shows um, from the other end that there is a definite demand for these kinds of foods. So people are starting to become a little bit more aware um, about what's in their food and they are kind of seeking out these more natural um, pure sort of products and that's good to, that's good to see um, still we have a long ways to go with labeling and that's a whole nother topic um, that that said uh, yeah I mean it's like that that drive for the real and all that is kind of like premised on like a definition of what is real which kind of seems blurry already yeah well it, it's I mean in this case I don't think it is blurry I think real in the case of food is less processed. I think the more processed the food is, um, the farther away it gets from real, from the I, plant that you pick off of the stem and eat that is hopefully not GMO. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. That is a very important, complete, separate discussion. Um, but I think the obscurity of what's going on is at least a very horrible way to jump into our next conversation. <laughs> which is on the Keystone Pipeline. Right. As far as nobody knows what the hell is going on. Oh. Um, so basically, uh, uh, don't don't worry about it. It is, uh, I don't know, at the time of recording, 11 o'clock, 18th of November. Uh, Keystone Pipeline has gone through Senate for, I was, gonna, I, was, I was about to say first time, but I'm positive it's been at least speculated about multiple times in the recent past. Um, so it's probably not the first time, actually. Uh, but this is the, the, the last time that the 113th Congress will ever have to uh, attempt to really pass any bill that matters because okay, they're only in session for a couple other days. Um, but that being said, uh, according to Business Insider of uh, in India, uh, which I think is also considered the India Economic Times, but I'll have to double check that. Um, the uh, the headline uh, Senate vote puts Keystone Pipeline on ice. Uh, that was a when we first were thinking about recording this earlier tonight. We were talking about uh, Keystone. It's like happening now. We should totally try and do something live. By the time we got it all together, it had already happened, and it was a no. So uh, half of the discussion is basically omitted, but the the other half is what we we get to experience now. And now that it's a, a no go, um, but separately and personally, in my own opinion, based on my own research, it's. Very likely, and I'll thank Jen Briney from Congressional Dish as far as uh, for the intel. It's very likely that's probably the, one of the first things the 114th Congress will do, and I, I totally agree with that sentiment. Um, it's very likely going to pass as soon as the uh, recently elected uh, representatives get into office. So uh, this is some text from the article, very dry standard kind of production text. Uh, a bill to approve the Keystone XL pipeline was defeated in the Senate on Tuesday. Uh, the Senate voted 59 to 41, putting the bill uh, one vote shy of, it, of the 60 it needed to reach the White House. So basically it had gone through the House. It was then in the Senate. It got defeated in the Senate. If it had gone through the Senate, it would have gotten to Obama, who many people speculated uh, that he would not uh, pass the bill, um, uh, he would, that he would specifically veto it. He had said himself that he would veto it. That being said, plenty of his donors and fundraisers uh, or like, I guess, big donors of the Democratic Party have like lots of uh, financial stake in it being a thing. So I'm led to believe that it's very likely that he was kind of he he is currently looking for uh, a uh, basically an excuse like the specifically the Republicans made me do it, in which case he can just kind of move on with it. Nobody can give him flack and it'll just kind of be OK. So like I said, I that feeds into my belief that it'll keep going. And so I, I thought it was really interesting reading some of the, the Reddit comments uh, just on this this topic. Um, and one of the top comments of the day on this article, which actually reached relatively high up there in terms of in, uh, the politics subreddit, is a quote from Redditor Netyo Yan 7 Trans Canada's words, colon. Uh, sick on the colon. He didn't actually put that, but it doesn't really matter. Not a single drop of crude oil. Blah, blah, blah. Not a single drop of crude oil will be exported. It is shipped to refineries in the south. Not a single drop of refined products shipped through the pipeline will be exported. The pipeline only ships crude oil. Meaning, 
The crude oil comes from Canada, is refined, then likely exported. Thousands of construction jobs are created for two years, then all those construction jobs dry up, and then what? Where is the long-term benefit to the United States? D- yeah. This is, <sighs> you know, uh, that, that, was, that was one thing that I always was so pissed to hear that, oh, it's a good job creation. I'm like, okay, job creation for how long? That's not I, the kind it, of job creation and construction that we need. I, I totally agree. And even looking at their own site, uh, keystone-xl.com, they, which at the top has TransCanada, like the oil company name at, at the header. Um, it's a WordPress blog, but <laughs> it looks like something that could sway lobbyists, which is the horrible, sad truth I don't even want to get into right now. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, the, the, even by their own site's uh, account, uh, they're talking 42,000 jobs. So that's like 42,000 people that will like potentially have maybe stable if hard labored income for two years. And realistically, I mean, if the project is slated to be like constructed and done in two years, then yeah, that's pretty much it, specifically the construction jobs. You then need a chunk of other jobs, but we'll get there in, in, a, in one quick moment. So that one of the replies to that comment, and this is a very common concern that I see uh, in, on actually both sides. And I don't know if you've heard this side, but I, I think it's more common to hear the opposite. So. Uh, this is from another re- that will pass was from redditor neto yen seven and this is from synux s y n u x i'm on board with what you're saying but you have to acknowledge one benefit of the pipeline and that's the presumed in parentheses reduction of the train derailment meets crude spills again i'm with you but we have to be fair to the highlights of the idea we don't like so he's what he's saying is we 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 have to at least admit at least it will reduce the amount of crude train spills from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. But the common concern I hear on the opposite side is what if a leak springs? We saw this crazy thing in Virginia or Washington or I think it was West Virginia uh, relatively like in the past couple of years where it was like this massive oil leak that nobody noticed until it like flooded a bunch of neighborhoods and in just straight up oil. And then it's like, so what do we do? The ground is screwed. Everybody Mm -hmm. has to either bail or just kind of like there's nothing of value in that land anymore. Um, but so like if the, the common worry is like either of like spills or like via either trail train derailment or like a pipeline leak, fortunately, according to the same page that you can actually get a lot of the first commenters uh, comments, keystone-xl.com slash facts, I guess is the category, slash mixed myths slash dash facts. <laughs> it's, it's so silly. They're not very good at URL. So I'm sorry. Facts yeah. Slash myths dash facts. It's a WordPress site, then. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's a WordPress site made by a bunch of lobbyists. Whatever. Uh, on their their page, they they talk about it being the most safe pipeline ever built. Specifically, in the comments saying we conduct regular emergency exercises and aerial surveys every two weeks, which is a whole nother weird world of so, potential. Uh, let me just just close that real quick. Okay. Okay. Saying, yeah. What that means is if the Keystone Pipeline tube is built, I don't know how far the range of sight of an aerial drone is, but I'm willing to bet within 8 to 40 miles, depending on clarity of view, we conduct regular emergency exercises and aerial surveys. So if the pipe is near you, they very well may be doing, they're they're telling you they will be doing aerial surveys. There will be either a plane or a helicopter or a drone flying overhead, recording everything going on every two weeks. And optionally also, there will be regular emergency exercises just to, you know, test the the potential of somebody coming and fucking with the pipe. Okay. This, I think, is a whole can of worms that nobody's really touched. Go ahead, man. I'm okay. sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so let's go back to 2010. Mm-hmm. BP oil spill in the Gulf, which not ironically, is where this whole big pipeline of oil is leading. Um, The last place in the world that needs more oil. Um, So when that happened, President Obama gave a speech and he talked about, um, you know, how BP is going to be held 100% responsible. And um, his, his response was basically, we need to tighten regulations. He said that the BP oil spill was a result of corruption between 
um, government officials and corporate people, <laughs> corporations. Um, corporations are people, you know. Um, so that was his whole thing. He's saying, you know, uh, we we need we need tighter regulations. That's how we solve this problem. We don't stop it by by uh, you know cutting down on our oil addiction. We stop it by tighter regulations. So what he did um, to, in response to this crisis was he basically uh, said to BP, Let, uh, "We're in control of all of your actions from here on out. You don't act without our approval, but we don't have the science or the technology." or understanding of these systems to fix it on our own. So you still have to do that, but we have to approve it first. And he had, you know, appointed his own like board of scientists to review whatever stuff that they're going to do. Um, but, uh, basically he, there was no oversight. There was no oversight. The people who were supposed to be ensuring the safety of these systems were appointed by BP and the oil industry themselves. There was no regulation over whatsoever. So this this is 2010, this is four years ago. That happened, it was an environmental catastrophe. It destroyed the Gulf, it destroyed the fishing industry, the, the wildlife, the whole, you know, there was the, the entire towns just they just destroyed these people. Didn't, you know, the, 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 their jobs were, Screw! There's fishermen out there. Like we can't fish. Can we? What, what, can we help? Like, is there something we could do to help? So, I see the Keystone XL pipeline being another potential environmental catastrophe on the scale, maybe even a greater scale um, than the Gulf spill. But why? are they the only ones who are watching themselves? After all of this, after all this, this shit about, you know, tightening regulations, we need to, you know, we need uh, more people to, uh, uh, we need to appoint a, a board to, you know, look over this stuff, to watch this stuff, to make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay, it didn't get approved, but you know, if it did, you know, the, uh, on their, on their site, very- they're talking and about they are world. the only ones who are going to be watching their own stuff. Obama didn't talk about that at all. He all he talked about was, uh, and this is like you know his own public opinion about whether he would have vetoed it or not. Uh, all he talked about that I saw was um, we don't benefit from it. We're basically just carrying Canada's stuff to uh, be exported. Mm-hmm. And we don't benefit from it. That was the only thing he talked about. No environmental issues whatsoever. And as they say on their own site on Keystone-XL.com, the WordPress site, like, you know, any of us have, except they have $50 billion behind it, if not way more than that. I haven't even looked into it. Um, yeah, they uh, they are – they their relationship with the oil – is what they would describe as the same as a furniture mover moving your bed. Like they don't own your bed. Like they don't own the oil. They just have the contracts with the refineries at the end and the production facilities at the beginning that like excavate it and put it together and compress it and do whatever else. I don't, I don't know. I I truly don't know the supply line of uh, crude oil, but it just it, it seems so ridiculous, and what seems even more ridiculous is that the game has been so well crafted at this point, to the point where our only negative response to it is, and not to demean what you just said, because I think it's very important, but like to be scared of it spilling worse. So they get to spy on everybody the whole fucking yeah. pipeline long, and it's like they've crafted yeah. this whole like they they. They are two steps ahead. When you have $90 billion, I hope to God you're two steps ahead because it's incredibly silly if you're not. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's literally the first conversation you say. Like, well, you're building a massive pipe to move a shit ton of oil 3,000 miles. All right, well, maybe we should, like, make sure it's safe because it doesn't sound like it's easy to make safe the whole way. <laughs> but, like, the the if they then take that and turn that against you to say, like, well, now that gives us good – you know, like if we want to do it, it's totally cool. Then if we have like 
drones going up and down the perimeter every two weeks, right? Like legit, <laughs> that's exactly what they're actually saying. That's what's in the legislation. That's that is what they are, will be legally obliged to do. I mean, it's it's almost fucking insane. Yeah, to the degree that that has been so crafted. So I I don't know. It's it's that that. I'm not quite sure where to take that, but that really freaks me out. Yeah, it, it's it's funny, you know, like, because what is a drone really going to do? A drone on its own doesn't do anything if it's not armed with missiles. I mean, uh, but you know, there's still got to be pictures. there still has to be people watching those drones. And who's going to be doing that? Who's going to be who's going to be watching the video feeds? Who's going to be you no, know? That's a boring you, job sitting there. The oh, drones aren't the autonomous. pipe again. Most of them. Are joysticked. I'm pretty positive. Where do sensors come into play here? Isn't there can't isn't there a way that you could build a sensor into this whole pipeline system to know like, hey, uh, the pressure is really low in this part of the pipe. Send a signal over, um, you know, like, and then maybe like the drone as a secondary. Um, well, exactly. If I, the best way to get government money is to say I need to buy two things rather than say I need to buy one. And, wh- and why is that? Because then I get the money for both instead of the first. <laughs> right. Okay. And, and if well, I you're, can talk- you're talking about government the cost funding. On both. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Okay. So I mean, I actually don't know this. Were they seeking government funding? Oh, that's. I mean, why is it entirely? It it's entirely gov- government funded. Uh, well, so they claim they're going to bring about four and a half billion or something like that into the the. GDP of the government, but basically it's because of contracts they've like already signed that they're just like trying to push through as far as I know. So it's like I okay. I wish I knew more information on exactly who is receiving <clears throat> sorry, who's receiving what money. But it's uh there there's a lot of basically there's a ton of money basically waiting at the starting gate and the mm-hmm. moment that they can open the like I don't know, proverbial floodgates the money will rush in specifically to the people who allowed it to happen mm-hmm. and, and that's and that's why it's really hard to fight to hold i mean that's why it's difficult to to keep it from getting through all branches of government i yeah. mean it is what it is so uh, i i actually did read um i'll dig up the article I, I i have it somewhere um i did read that the reason that it was a bill um is because it is connecting to Canada. So it's going out of the country. Federal. Um, right. It's, it's leaving the country. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a, 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 um, agreement that we would have to make between two countries. So that was the reason, um, that makes sense. I believe, uh, or so I read. Cause it would be a single business deal that dealt with things both inside and outside of the country. I guess that, that would, that would make sense. Anything that mm-hmm. kind of bridges that threshold would be almost definitely considered, federal Mm -hmm. i'm not sure if there's like a another thing that could be realistically so all right this is this is a super hot topic and there's a lot of stuff to say about this um i just want to we should move on um in a second but i do also want to say that um the final decision uh when this does and it will be proposed again to legislators um if it does pass the final decision is still going to be the president's um and Barack Obama, particularly, I think that he would sign off on it personally. I think he would. I think I don't think he would veto it. Um, and I say that because um, going back to the Gulf, um, he, despite the horrible consequences of these spills, he still allowed it to happen. He still allowed afterwards. Once we saw, like, probably wasn't even the worst that it could be, but. It was horrible. It was horrible. He still allowed it to happen afterwards. And his reasoning for allowing us to have oil drilling, offshore drilling, is that oil is an important part of our energy strategy. That's a word that he – our energy strategy. Because, you know, he's uh, you know un- un- unraveled this whole um, – he's, he's done a lot actually um, in uh, passing – uh, policies for um, clean energy. Um, we've made a lot of progress during his presidency in that field, and that's that's good. I hope that stays and continues to grow um, after his uh, presidency is over. But he still, 
he, he the way he speaks about oil, he it doesn't seem like he's trying to get away from it. That said, um, I totally feel you, and I think kind of to your point, um, in terms of who potentially like who has the resources to actually fix a spill of the magnitude. I mean, and that's probably BP's fucking defense too. Mm-hmm. Like. What do you do? I mean, does the government have like massive do you know what they were doing? sucker tankers? They do you don't know what they were those. doing? BP was like, let's throw bags of sand on it. <laughs> just, they had no idea what to do. Actually, so much worse than that. They, they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they put no, bags no, of sand they, on it. <laughs> after, because there was like, uh, I'm pretty positive it was congressional hearings and like multiple kind of follow ups, uh, like the, through government as far as like, how are you doing with this? Like, this needs to be fixed. Do we need mm-hmm. to approve anything? Like, what, what do we need to get done? And I'm pretty positive I'll have to look up notes for this. Uh, they just ended up spraying a chemical over the ocean that made it. Not it made it flat. sink. It, they made it. Yeah, it just it just made it heavier, so it sank to the as bottom. As long as you couldn't take pictures oh, from the sky yeah. that made it look oily, it wasn't oily. Yep. All right. The power of perception. On that um, note, uh, what do we have next? I uh, this next one is completely unrelated, but I just think it's super interesting. Uh, this is from techworm.org, which is a new site to me, and I think they're really cool. They've got a bunch of really interesting stuff. Another thing on tour that we're not going to get to today, but I would love to get to. And well, we need to do a uh, super mega insecurity super show. We'll do that yeah. at some point in the near future. Yeah, totally. Um, but basically, so the, the techworm.org, the headline is, Hackers encrypted the entire city of Detroit database and demanded ransom of 2,000 bitcoins. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is fantastic. During a speech during a speech for the North American International Cyber Summit being held in Michigan, Detroit, the mayor of Detroit, Mike Dugan, D U G G A N, made a startling revelation. He said that everything's a revelation since Snowden. He said that the entire city database was attacked by hackers and held hostage. The hackers demanded a ransom of 2000 bitcoins and encrypted digital currency to decrypt the same. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get over the fact, like how they're using encrypted, because it is using what, and, and crypt- cryptography to make the public private key, public private key pair. But I'm not gonna get into that right now. Yeah. Uh, next, next uh, sentence: uh, Bitcoin is currently worth four hundred one dollars and seventy five cents, making that ransom worth eight hundred three thousand five hundred dollars worth of moolah. And the hackers wanted in return for decrypting uh, that. $803,500 worth of moolah the hackers wanted in return for decrypting the files. Uh, Dugan said the ransom was not paid because the database was not used or needed by the city. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, oh my goodness. I'm sorry, man. What do you think about it? This is... Uh, okay, so I think, I think that's yeah. kind of a... Uh, they probably did use that database. I I bet they did. I think they're trying to just like push the hackers under the rug and try and be like, ah, oh, we didn't need that. You're well, not you getting any of that it. money. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, but my big question here is, what is in this database? What is a city database? I mean, I'm in. I live in Philadelphia. I don't think Philadelphia has a database, but like, what would go in it? I can tell you, as someone who worked for the city of Philadelphia, oh, okay, there's database. Enlighten me. I, I mean, you don't want to know. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, it's really, but you just it's said really, databases. So, the, um, uh, specifically in terms of this, um, it looks like amount of emails that potentially were leaked, and uh, really, what the so what the crux of the story is. And what it appears to be to me is a propaganda propaganda piece for uh, for Detroit, basically for the city of Detroit, because it kind of it kind of finishes up with like where this thing was first revealed, where these revelations came from. Um, it was uh, by a gentleman with the last name of Snyder, and uh, in his speech at the Michigan Cyber Initiative in 2015, he. Uh, basically started just started positing different threats of cyber attacks and was using that as a way to galvanize people 
to say that like we need to put together a like a cyber core. We need to put together effectively like a national guard, but for the internet. And it's uh, been like highlighted, uh, and like as far as like working alongside the the Michigan State Police and the Cyber Command Center in Michigan, and basically, it's it's really interesting because we don't know if it's true, and until he provides the public key of this of the guy like i don't even know what like it's not even there's no public key actually now that i think about it for him to to divulge but like there's no the beauty of anonymous networks like bitcoin the beauty of anonymous messaging networks like uh like a tor or an i2p or something like that is that i can i can claim that anybody just said anything to me on that right now like right now they just i just got a ransom for five billion dollars for all of my stuff. I just got one on Bitcoin, and I can't prove it because it's encrypted. I have no idea how to prove anything. It's totally anonymous. That's the whole point. So, like an anonymous network in that very sense is like the perfect tool for uh, an agent provocateur if it was real. Some intergovernmental, in, like it doesn't even matter whether governmental or not. Some completely independent entity could instigate this on behalf of another person to these guys to the city of uh detroit and it could have been like a guy the mayor of detroit paid 50 bucks <laughs> to say like yo tell somebody that i won't be able to track that they need they tell they need to tell me that i stole a, or they need to tell me that they stole a database that i need to pay them for like there's no way to verify any of it unfortunately because of yeah. the nature of the system itself so it's actually, I think, a very interesting story on a couple different levels, but as far as which one is, uh, as far as which one should be taken home and thought about tomorrow, I, I mean, I see this, I see this as a start to a, a, a movie. Like, uh, this, this is a great, great start to a movie. And w- what I would like to see happen in this movie later, since I don't live in Detroit. And I, I don't give a shit. Sorry, Ben Jordan. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everyone really. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, what I would like to see is this supposed hacker who has this database and encrypted it. Um, I would like to see him start using some of this data that he has against um, whatever uh, you know powers that be um, to try and like get this ransom out of them so like for example i don't know like what kind of data would he even what would he even have that's like uh let's go low level let's assume all mailing addresses and names at those mailing addresses in the city start there okay so um maybe uh you know the uh mayor did something scandalous and uh he finds some emails about it and posts them up on Pastebin and <laughs> Reddit and I don't know. I don't know. My my <laughs> imagination is drawing a blank here, but I feel like there's you know, like if if he if this was actually valuable data, then he whoever has it should might potentially start using it against uh, whoever he's trying to get the ransom from. And that would be very interesting to see. That would be very, very interesting to see. But you seem to think that this is all just some sort of hoax. Yeah, because, like, we're like, all right, so, like, think of actually doing that. Think of, like, let's assume all you got was mailing addresses and people who live at those addresses. You then mail a thing to all of those places. You think it's, like, not hard? Like, you think it's difficult to track where a bajillion different of the same things came from? Like, come on, man. Yeah, Like, yeah. How, how else would that? There's no... There's no enforcement on behalf of the potential attacker. There's no enforcement on behalf of the people claiming there's something that needs to be enforced. It's just like a silly conversation from all sides, and the only thing or person it could serve to benefit would be someone who's like trying to push a fucking basically militarized hacker force, which I hope to get into a very serious discussion with Tom Secker in the near future with, uh, as far as like how hackers how the whole culture of hacking has 
become militarized and indoctrinated into mainstream culture purely for both governmental and business benefit. And I mm-hmm. think that is a, a, like I said, that's the core of my conversation with Tom Secker. So hopefully we'll, we'll have a good one there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, man, what, what do you think? Now. This is, what do you think it sounds like? I mean, it's a super funny story. I think, because- I think it's, it's totally believable whether it's real or not. It's totally believable. And okay. I think, it, I think it, 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 it could be real. Cause I mean, Dude, I mean, you look at these government, um, these uh, government systems they have for s- collecting data or uh, using data. Um, I mean, on the like municipal kind of level, um, and it's not very. It's it's all like really outdated and just really. Um, you you can't imagine that it's it's very secure. I actually know somebody who used to work for the police um, in my area back in Jersey, Monmouth County. Um, he worked for um, the the police working on their their networks and their data and all this stuff. And uh, he even, you know, like what they had before, he, was, he would tell me like, dude, anyone could have got this stuff. It's not really anything that's too important, but it's, you know, there's not really much you can do with it, honestly. I mean, I guess someone who's creative enough could do a lot with it, but, um, you yeah, know. I think that's... They're, they're basically, they're, they're, they're using... Anyone, well, who, anyone who does, who is using databases at the municipal kind of level are more than likely very outdated. They're not willing to spend more of their limited budgets on, um, you know, security and technology. That's just not something they're thinking about. They're thinking about buying new SUVs and, you know, I mean, even like my, my local police station, uh, back in Jersey, um, they get new cars like every year and there's just, you see them, they get, they're souped up and they're all driving SUVs. They're driving like explorers and you're like, dude, they're just driving these things around. You're like, come on, man. This is a lot of money. <laughs> I, yeah, I at this point, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, I just have be- come to believe that every American car on the road must be a cop because who the hell else would buy an American car? <laughs> <laughs> eh, I know, I know I, a lot I'm of people kidding, who, who have a lot to say about that, but they, all right, we're, we're getting off topic. We're getting off absolutely topic. off topic, uh, dude. I really appreciate the discussion. I have no idea how long this has been. Um, um, it has been 44? about okay. yeah, about forty-five minutes. Um, so, is there anything uh, I guess in particular that, that you want to kind of dip into, or, or or any kind of like recent stuff that that you're shooting, looking forward to, or, or trying to I don't know, trying to do in the near future? Um, what am I trying to do in the near future? In my personal life, in all lives. I'm going to interrupt myself for a second. Uh, We chopped this whole part out for the next 15 minutes where we talked about uh, what we're doing in our lives, what we're interested in. Um, If you guys do care about that, we can totally talk about that in another episode. So let us know. To some degree, I'm slightly averse to the idea of an introduction because I don't think that this show is supposed to be about us, the messengers. I think it is more importantly supposed to be about the message. Uh, if it's important, if, if, if to the listener it is important that we have some form of knowledge in the field in which we're discussing, I, I think that it's good to like validate and like maybe like pacify that, but only for the sake of getting to the message, which is whatever it is we're talking about. And I, I, think I agree. This. And I think we both try and do that, and I hope we're yeah. accomplishing that. Ah, well, we probably suck now, but we'll... Whatever. Maybe get better tomorrow. Well, that's the that's the goal, right? <laughs> that is that <laughs> is the goal at Lush Future. Always. That's, yeah, yeah. Looking, it's always better looking tomorrow. at a better tomorrow. <laughs> I can guarantee it'll be better tomorrow. It's gonna be better, guys. <laughs> it's gonna, guys, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. If it sucks today, all right. We don't need to take this any further. Yep. All right. Uh, Let's call it a night.
Cheers. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Clank. <laughs> Clank. <laughs>